Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the BCC channel. And tonight, I am leading the charge, and we are doing Emerald City. We're doomed. Oh, you are. True. Yes, exactly. Speaking of which, joining me on this journey tonight is going to be OPT, who is playing our doomed Jacob. And we also are going to have TGE, who is playing our Janice, who is Henry. They're with me tonight on this crazy journey, and hopefully you guys enjoy the ride. But before anything else, let's do a bit of a recap so you can remember how we got here, because it's been a little while. So, um, as a brief note, we were previously introduced to our heroes and what they can do as they stopped a group of thugs got road robbing um, a bank and were um, and they ran away from the police to leave them to get arrested. So, good heroic action. But after we got familiar with our heroes, we found out that they were excited, or rather, Henry was excited, to go to an event called the Wrecking Ball. An awesome school dance where... Fabulous. Yes, it was. Fabulous! Actually, exactly fabulous, because in order to get prepared for the party, Henry and Jacob here got to dress up and go on a nice, awesome date night with Henry's boyfriend, Joey. Yeah, they got Henry to dress up. too prepared for the glow up. <laughs> that bunny was not ready for the glow up, no. Um, but before they actually went off to the party, that morning, uh, Jacob ended up having a very strange dream that ended up being a vision of sorts, in which he saw a burning, destroyed building uh, with uh, his friend Sove, uh, the hero, one of our heroes, trapped beneath a burning table, calling out for help. And in the midst of it all, Jacob reached into a trash can and pulled out himself. Yeah, that was kind of a thing. Kind of a thing. Um, he realized later that that whole dream was sore prophetic and was telling him to go to the wrecking ball to hopefully find something that he would be looking for. And find something they did, because when they went to the wrecking ball, it was wrecked by a strange bull fellow who crashed literally through the wall. Unbeknownst to them, he had been previously tackling with one of our heroes, Perry, who, and he had stolen a weather device. Perry thwarted an uh, attempt to sell off the weather device, but in the process, enraged the bull. And so these guys get the horns. So once he came to the party, he started wrecking things up. People were put into danger. And most importantly, Sove revealed himself to Joey. As being... Not yet. No, no, no. We ended on that. Oh, I that, thought you did. That reveal did not happen yet. We ended on that. Because you <laughs> saved him. Yes, I saved him, but it didn't reveal who I was. That did not happen yet. Okay, because you weren't in costume when you did that. Correct. Okay. <laughs> well, then we'll leave you to figure that out. But one of the more important things going on here as we ended the comic was that we had the bull fellow getting very excited about destroying property, clearly to try to make a name for himself and make a big impression. And as the police were streaming into the door uh, to kind of try to handle the situation, the big bull fellow was trying to knock down a low-bearing wall, and as he was pushing up against it, our heroes saw that he was bearing a tattoo on his back that was clearly marking him as one of the Lords of Hell, which is, one of the, which is a gang that our heroes tackled with when they first came together. Also tied in with that tattoo was a sign of a bull that clearly was marked Taros. And so we start our issue today, issue three, aptly named Taros. On the cover, we see the scene that we just described here, with Taurus's back showing off the big tattoo of the Lords of Hell Gang and his name, as we can see screams coming from off panel of Stop Police. So we open our issue, and we have two things that have been going on right now. We have Jacob out here in full hero getup, faced with this bull trying to destroy the building, and we have Henry, who just saved his boyfriend from certain squishing. So, let's start with the interesting part. The boyfriend saving. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, you pulled Joey out of a sticky situation there, and I think you guys, you took him to a back hallway to get him out of the way of all the destruction. That's exactly what happened. Okay, so you have Joey saved, uh, and he's kind of freaked out because he saw like all the um, 
the phasing thing happened to pull him to safety. And he's like looking at you with a lot of panic and, and going, uh, uh, Henry, uh, what, what, what did you just do? What do you, what, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? What did I just do? You just, you just pulled me through the floor and pulled me over here. I don't know how I got here and I didn't walk and you didn't walk either. Oh, we, we, we definitely walked. I, I think you're just, I think you're just a little, little panicky here. I'm pretty sure we, we walked. You know, I, I, you know, you almost got smushed by the thing, and we, I pulled you over here. We, we definitely ran here. I, I guess, I guess we did. I don't, I don't remember. But us, are you okay? Looks, looks down. The, the 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 suit he's wearing is clearly wrecked at this point. Yeah. I'm 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 fine. Outfits not so much, but I'm I'm good. Okay. Uh, where's where's Jacob? Did he get out? I um. This is a player question. Yes. Go ahead. Even though uh, OPT, even though you're technically not having the mask attribute, you don't reveal identity yet, right? You're still a push to talk. No, yeah, no, he's um, he's in mask and whatnot. He's swift foot, as it were. Right. Yeah, but I just couldn't remember if you technically were still playing the I have a secret identity card. So oh, um, yeah. oh, I forget if he. T- he I don't changed think... out of prying eyes. Yeah, so. I don't right. think I, he may have. Well, he's told Henry a lot. I don't know if he's told him that he dresses well, up like that, but... <laughs> right, like, Jacob has told Henry a lot of things. Somebody knows the full deal. <laughs> right. So, uh, it's one of those things I know Henry would know just because, you know, well, because, um, Sove knows the whole... Right. So, Henry would I'm know. I'm asking what's the public, what's the public... Oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. Okay. It's just some kid, vigilante yeah. dude. I, 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 I hope, I mean, he, he, he is a rabbit, so they, they, they tend to run fast. Yeah, I do. I just... I hope he's okay. Jeez, let's deal with that bull guy. We we gotta get out of here. I mean, yes, but, but I, I can't right now. But why not? Because if that thing's gonna be up there smashing walls, my, my dad's here. I can't just, you know, leave. But your dad's with the police. He's got it handled. Did, did you see the size of that thing? And it's kind of my fault he's raging right now. Yeah, I, I guess so. So, I mean, maybe I can maybe I can figure a way to calm him down. I don't know. Oh, that's that's way too dangerous. I don't want you to get hurt. I'm not gonna get hurt. I promise. But I almost did. But you didn't, didn't you? Yeah, I'm still not quite sure how. I guess. I'm just really worried about you, so... I'll just don't... Fine. Don't do anything stupid, okay? You mean more stupid than staying here with a rampaging bull so I can make sure my father's safe? Yeah. More stupid than that. Okay, just want to know where we're setting the bar here, because you know, but that's a pretty high bar, so I can get away with a lot of stupid at that point. <laughs> I guess some, yeah, but don't push it. I know you. What's that supposed to mean? Just be careful. Okay, okay, I admit, my decision-making isn't the best. It's not. (laughs) Tend to get a little excitable. Just a bit. But I know I've at least made one good decision. What's that? Leans over and gives him a kiss and runs back into the arena. Oh, Joey's like kind of stunned and happy. The good, that's my guess. <laughs> and by runs back into the arena, I mean runs back out of sight and then goes costume time. <laughs> okay, so as Sove gets himself ready, Jacob, you're out there in the main area with this bull, Taros, trying to wreck the wall. The police at your back, and he's getting and um. What do you do? 
So what's the bull doing again? He's trying to wreck. He's he's been trying to um like cause a lot of destruction and such. And he was very excited about the aspect of being taped and having attention put upon him as he's creating quite a scene. And as he's been trying to wreck this role, he's been actually saying uh, things like, "I'll show them," like, and and the like, like, "I'll make the biggest, the best splash you've ever seen. Just watch." Gotcha. Okay. You also remember from your last small little tangle with him before this moment that he seemed pretty resilient to a lot of physical buffeting, so he's probably not too worried about hurting himself. Right. Okay, so, um... So, so he's... Okay, I'm trying to think of this. So he's doing exactly what at this moment? At this moment, uh, he's been pushing himself against um, one of the one of the walls. Okay. Of the yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's trying to like he's trying to like shove it down. It's starting right. to give. Right. This guy's ludicrous okay. strength. So. Um. Swiftfoot's going to um. Swiftly run over. And he's actually going to, um, so he's going to, like, basically try to spear this guy, just, like, out of the way. Like, so he's- You're trying to knock the bull away from the wall? Yes. Okay. Yes, he is. He's definitely trying to do that. So he's throwing your body into him. Uh, if you're doing that, I need you to roll to directly engage. Hmm. Okay. So, that's a hit. Uh, you get to choose one. Do you need me to read it off for you? No, no, no. I'm going to resist or avoid their blows. Alrighty. So, Swiftfoot, you dash into this guy and you spear him, give him a good old, like, just drive right down through the side. Uh, Torso is a very solid creature. So, you hit him really darn hard, and he barely budges but he is absolutely thrown off of his balance just enough to not be able to kind of like push the building the way he wants to. And so he looks down at you kind of in shock as you like interrupted his big spectacle. He's like, oh, I, I was going to do it. Yes, I know. That's the problem. Why do you got to get in my way? That's not fair. Well, because you're going to hurt a whole bunch of innocent people. Oh, well, maybe. Uh, so, after you pushed him off balance, um, he immediately just kind of gets really angry at you, and he's like, fine then, I'll hurt you! And he tries to throw a punch at you. But, because of your positioning, you already are able to easily dodge out of the way. Yay. Yay. As he smashes a hole into that wall anyway, Though he doesn't do it as effectively as he could have. That's positive. So, it is positive. He smashes the hole into that wall and creates a nice flame, a nice a flying bit of debris that extends out from his attack and sprays across the uh, main foyer area where all the destruction and such is going on. And as you see that kind of spray happen, you notice that that debris out there, once it kind of clears a bit, you can see a familiar shape out there who's kind of like held up held up against the table. Mm-hmm. And it's a female shape, a female rabbit, actually. Penelope. Exactly. Yeah. She's there and even though you know she came with a date, he's nowhere to be seen. As she's cowering here next to a table, trying to look for an opportunity clearly to escape. So as you see this, what do you do? Oh, um Swiftfoot immediately runs over to her. Okay. You run over to her as the bull kind of shouts at you, Hey, where are you going? But he's far too slow to actually chase after you. And you get over to Penelope, and you find that she is cowering here, and she's kind of shaking because of all the debris that's been flying around, and she's just trying not to get hit. Right. So he reaches, does that whole thing where he reaches his hand out, and in, in a superhero-y kind of trying to hide his voice thing, says... Take my hand! Come with me, I'll save you! Shooks up at you. Who are you? 
Swiftfoot, come on. Uh, okay. And she reaches out to take your hand. He, Jacob, or Swiftfoot grabs her hand and kind of, um, pulls her up, uh, and, uh, if she's shaking at all, he's just gonna carry her, and he's gonna get her out of the building. Okay. She was shaking quite profusely, so... Yeah. You probably do that classic, like, sort of superhero carry, we kind of get her up and start running her out. Yes. Nice. Okay, so you run her out, and as you're going out the building, um, which way do you tend to do you try to go out the building? Out the front, back, like, where yeah, you Yeah, uh, he'll go towards the police, because, you know... Smart. A victim kind of thing. Okay. So you go towards the police, and the police immediately give you room, because as much as they don't like vigilantes, as they've made very clear, they also like saving people. Yes. Yes. So they give you room to actually get through as you're getting her out of there. And you manage to kind of get through and get her out the entrance uh, without the police stopping you. And in fact, once you get her out there, they immediately are, are kind of like ready to go over and like take her over like they would for any kind of like saving situation. Yeah, which is what he lets them do. Okay. So you're out there and you've got her and the EMS is out there and going to get ready to take care of her and give her like one of those nice comforting blankets. That leaves the bull inside alone with the police between him and you. Mm -hmm. Sove, how are you coming onto the scene? Well, so basically right now what you're telling me is that uh, the bull is basically staring down the police and basically... This is true. Uh, he's staring at down the police as he, saw, as he sees um, Swiftfoot go that direction. And he's making it very clear that he's getting ready to charge. As, he, as he's saying, like, don't run away from me! So at this point, what's going to happen then is Sove's going to go invisible and fly till he's right behind the bull's ears. <laughs> right behind the bull and just go, it's not that they're running away from you, is it? Taurus kind of stops and looks up as his ear kind of flicks. It's like, that's... That's not my inside voice. Who says you can't have a second? He starts looking around and kind of like whipping around, trying to see you. I'm guessing Henry's invisible? Yeah. Yeah. If you really want to make a scene, there's a wall. Off to your left, that would be a fantastic thing to charge through head first. <gasps> I'm going to need you to roll to provoke. Well, actually, I'm setting up Dangerous Web. <laughs> oh, smart. Okay, do that. You'll notice I said I was invisible because the Dangerous Web I set up, this wall is reinforced with a bunch of, like, metal and stuff. He's basically planning on having to pull knock himself out with dangerous web as he just headlogs into this. Very nice. Okay. Go ahead and roll her. Okay. Nice. All right, what's that? Do you want a full hit? Dangerous web. When you reveal a trap you've left for someone using your powers, roll plus your mask's label, in this case, Freak. On a hit, your opponent trips into it, and you get an opening or an opportunity against them. On a 10+, plus, take plus one forward to pursuing it. On nice. a miss, this trap inadvertently leads to a dangerous escalation. Very nice. Okay, so you tell Taros about that wall, and he starts nodding, saying, Yeah! Yeah! That's a good wall! It'll make it big, and the, the, cameras, the cameras are still going, right? He turns through that wall, he starts like doing the whole step thing where he's pushing dirt underneath, saying, this is going to be a big one! And he charges right towards that wall. So, he plows straight into that wall. You said there's like steel reinforcement behind yeah, it? Yeah, basically, yeah. So, okay. my thought process here is, is Henry flies with him, lands, waits for him to bounce off all like... Whoop, 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 picks up one of the baseball bats that he had left there, rematerializes, and just home run swings. Not bad. Okay. So okay. that essentially sort of what goes is what goes on. 
Um, Taurus does indeed trash into that wall, and he hits those steel beams very hard. So hard, in fact, that since he's got his horns down to kind of do it, one of them impales themselves onto his horns. And amazingly or enough, he's actually more thrown off balance by that than by the impact itself. But you get your opportunity there as he's kind of like trying to figure out like, ah, that doesn't normally happen. Yeah, and then Henry's going to rematerialize and just rematerialize, batter up, thwack. Okay, go to directly engage. Yeah, to get plus one forward on this. Ooh. All righty. So that's a nine, if I remember correctly. That means you get to choose one. What's that going to be? I'm debating. Do I want to selfishly use team? I was thinking about if I could, but I'm like out of the building, so I can't really help you. Not just yet, yeah. I'm not going to selfishly use team yet. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to take something from him. And what is that? His balance. Ooh. I mean, giant metal pole on his head, a little bit more weight pushing it. That's going to that's gonna set anyone's equilibrium off. Not bad, not bad. Okay, so you take his balance by, with your big swing and the fact that he has that giant weird bit of balance on top of his head. You hit him hard enough to make him topple down. Uh, and when he does so, he oddly starts crying. He is oh. weeping loudly and openly as he's trying to get this big metal bar off of his horns. He can't stand up properly. There's rubble that's kind of like raining down a little bit and like little pebbles are dropping on top of that little like metal bar making that terrible sound. And he starts weeping loudly and saying, What'd you go do that for? You're a monster! And he's trying to change your labels. Before before he does anything, because I'm going to reject this no matter what. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm definitely rejecting this. So I'll roll first, then I'll react accordingly. Okay, go for it. Uh, well, actually, what's the oh, label shift? The label. I mean, so he's calling you a monster. He says he, want, um, he wants to push your freak up and your mundane down. Okay, I have, I have to reject that by default. You do. Okay, so an eight when you reject. I forget what happens. Let me look that up real I quick. I get to choose one. Clear conditioner mark potential by immediately acting to prove them wrong. Shift the label up and label down your choice, or cancel their influence to take plus one forward against them. Very nice. So, Which one are you going to do? Yeah, I'll show you in, in things. So he looks... <clears throat> so how do you sort of land at this point? Looks... Really? I'm the monster. I am, am the monster. Not, not, not the, not the half bull, half man, all jerk who decided that he was going to put innocent people in danger by running roughshod over everything and running headfirst into a clearly trapped, reinforced steel wall. Yet My voice I'm said it was a good voice. idea. Of course, the voice said it was a good idea. I'm the voice, but no, I'm not the monster. I'm the hero in this situation. You're the monster. And there's one thing heroes do. What's that? They don't listen to the monsters in the closet. I'm going to cancel his influence and take plus one forward against him. Ooh, nice. So this bull is completely flabbergasted at the fact that you just called him a monster because he doesn't see himself that way. And so, because of that, in order to prove that he's not a monster, he gets up and he takes off that girder, ripping it off, he says, I'm not a monster! I'm important, and everybody is going to know how awesome I am! And Jacob, Swiftfoot oh. rather, this is about the time when you can come back onto the scene. Hey. If you want to fight back through the police to get there. Oh, um, his plan was to just run back, because he's got super speed. Well, not like sonic speed, but he's really fast, so. Gotcha. And agile, so he's one rabbit too overpowered, because... Psy Delta. So, um, yeah, he's just going to, like, run and jump over everyone's head, pretty much. Okay, yeah, the police do one of these things where they kind of, like, watch you. Hey! So you land in this, and you see uh, Taros 
ripping off this giant metal beam from his head, holding one end in each arm as he starts screaming, like, I am important, and you're going to respect me, and everybody's going to watch as I smash a costumer. A what? <laughs> a costumer. Me. Oh, yes. okay, gotcha. So, you see him getting mad, holding these two weapons, bearing down upon Sove. What do you do, Swiftfoot? So, I might as well do my new thing. Ooh, new things. I like you have new, a new things. Thing. Yes, I have one advance, and I decided to go all out, and I uh, chose Get Bird and Three Flares. So, oh. so um, Jacob's going, or Swiftfoot's going to uh, kind of run in there, and he's going to charge his burn, which is going to be interesting because I have no conditions, so this Ew, is a boy. flat roll. Yeah, this should be ugly. Not necessarily. It's a 50-50 shot of horribleness. Yeah, 50-50 usually. No. Hey! <laughs> You're going to be airing a little on the higher side, but hey, you get to mark the condition to hold three. Indeed. Right. Okay, so what's it like when you charge a burn, by the way? So, um, he's de- so he's never done this before. So mm-hmm. he sees this happening, and he, like, he sees Sove in trouble and whatnot, and, and he just stands there, and he just starts, he feels energy, like, coming into his body, and he can't explain it. Um, but his, um, his hands kind of start to glow a bit more, and, like, his suit, it's all black, starts to... Almost, uh... Well, you know the, the movie Tron? And how the, the the programs have all those, like, light kind of things, like, going down, whatever? Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that, only it's purple. Ooh, I like it. Right. So, um... As he charges up, uh, and gets... Um... Insecure about himself, because he's like, what the heck's going on? Um... <laughs> I am immediately going to spend one of those burn uh, to use moat. Ooh, spend one burn to explain cre- what that does. Spend one burn to create a barrier that will hold back threats as long as you keep your attention on it. Uh, the GM may call for you to spend another burn if the barrier is threatened by particularly powerful enemies. Okay, so you create a moat. What does what does this look like when you do so that? So it, it just says a barrier. Moat just a barrier of any kind. So right. um. So what happens is there is like this um, thin wall of uh, purple fire that just like comes right between Sove and um, Taurus, and um, like and it's clear like it's coming from Swiftfoot Jacob to Sove because he's just like it's he's surrounded by the same purple energy. So uh, he's going okay. to do that. And, uh, uh, he's gonna sit there, and, like, Jacob's gonna sit there, Swiftfoot's gonna sit there, and you can't see it because he's got the mask on, but he's looking completely shocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, I did that? Basically, uh, it's Sobe like, is also looking completely shocked, because you can see his eyes, and his eyes just go, what? Yeah. It just, so, and, important and you question. see, you see, you see Swiftfoot as you look at him, he goes... <laughs> important question about yeah. this energy barrier. Mm-hmm. How far out does it go? Um, like, is it surrounding Sylvie like a circle? Is it like a straight wall that extends like for so long? Like, what are we looking at? It's um, I would say it goes across the whole area. Like, it it's protecting Sylvie, so it might just curve around him after a while. But it's long. Okay, does it extend the entire like length of the room? You'd say? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, Sylvie. Just as you see this kind of like purple wall raise up against you, you see Taros brain down with both of those metal beams and strike against it really hard. And the wall holds, and the hit is so hard that you can see Taros like kind of reverberate himself as he like attacks at it, and he's clearly off balance from the strike. Uh, what do you do? So, have you ever played Mortal Kombat? I've seen it and played some of it, yes. So there's a couple of characters who have this ability to teleport underground and then uppercut as they reappear from above ground. Yeah, they're called cheap. 
Yeah, well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to teleport. I'm going to go invisible, incorporeal, whatever it is, uh, insubstantial, through the ground, run up, and just uppercut him as I come back up and reappear substantial. Okay, so you're going on the other side of the barrier to attack him. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> because this is funny and awesome. I agree. And, Roll to directly engage because you're and, uppercating. Pup going. And, and because Sove is Sove, he reappears, he just goes, Toasty! Yes. I was going to make a joke about, like, the, um... Mortal Kombat boss, but I can't remember his name right now. The actual bull. Oh, uh, um, Goro? No, not Goro. He's a dragon. Yeah, no, I didn't believe it either. Kintaro? Yeah, Kintaro. I think. Motaro. That's what it is. Mo because Moo. Motaro, okay. one of them, yeah. Yeah, one of the Taros. Anyway, attack this Taro. And I get my plus one forward because I canceled his influence. You did. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't. No. Okay. So, you failed to directly engage. Uh, so, you go through and you dip down to do this awesome Mortal Kombat uppercut against Tauros. And you slug him where you think is really good right in the chin. And as you're about to do your toasty celebration, Tauros actually recovers quicker than you'd expected. And he grabs you and starts grinding your face against the barrier that... Your buddy created for him. A nice big wall. So, I'm totally shaking my hand, Johnny um, Cage style. Can I move into the defend? Uh, no, because this is a reaction to the... Uh, sure. yeah. This is his hard move. Exactly. Okay. So, roll to take a powerful blow for me, please, Sove. Sort of, sort of. Okay. Sure. Now the yeah. guys do it. It's about time. Okay, so you took a powerful blow. You get to choose one from the ten. Who's controlling myself my powers in a terrible way? The only option to pick. Of course. Yep. <laughs> okay, so, Sove, as you're being ground up against uh, the side of this barrier, you can feel kind of like your brain jumbling about. And you find that after a second, though, the shaking stops as... Torles has let go of you, or at least it seems like he has, because he's holding air right now, as you're flying through the air, and you land in the floor, as in literally in the floor. You are right now incorporeal, and for some reason you can't turn yourself back to being corporeal. This is what Casper feels like. Swiftfoot, you just saw your ally get ground against a, a barrier that you made, and then go flying off old Casper style. Right. Do I see him, by the way? You can see him. He's just, like, phased out partially and somehow in the floor. So, Swiftfoot runs over, and he's like, Sove, wh what? I... Are you... I... I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm half in, half out, and... So, um... Well, I mean, I'm, I'm all out, technically, but that's another story. Right. <laughs> so you need me to call somebody? No, but can you bring an ecto-cooler? That'll work, too. Oh, yeah! I, you know what? I think I saw some back in the fridge. You know, they're like 25 years old, so they're probably still fine. No, it was re-released, like, last summer. Oh, was it? Oh, man. Yeah. I didn't know. Giant bull. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Of course. Meanwhile, Toros is stomping up and down as he sees you guys talking. And he's saying, no, you're ignoring me. I'm the star of this seed. Everybody look at me. So, Swiftfoot's actually going to turn his attention back to Sove. It's like, so, um, how, how did you get, like, can you get back to normal here? Probably, eventually, I don't know, but I have a really bad idea. Mm. I think I may know how to stop him. Okay, well, you see, what Swift was trying to do right now is provoke him. Yeah, oh, I, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. And, but, but, I mean, yeah, so, 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 so he knows what trying to do, says, I have an idea to figure out how to stop him, and then he's like, oh, yeah, um, by the way, one other thing, um, whoever did your tux from earlier, I have job. Yeah, thanks. That was a good friend of mine. Oh, I haven't seen him, though. I hope he's all right. Well, I mean, probably didn't stick around. No, no, him and... Uh, 
I mean, the Joey. state probably got out of there. Joey. Yeah. Um, as you're talking, by the way, you start feeling a vibration coming as the stomping gets louder. Mm-hmm. And he's clearly gearing up to charge at you again. Yep. Which but is... you're trying to provoke him, so... Yeah, so... What, what are you I'm... trying to get him to do? I'm trying to get him to basically, um... Slam himself into the same wall that he did before. Like, charging past me. <laughs> okay, so basically you're going to be playing, you know, Toro Fighter. Yes. Yeah. Good stuff. Roll to provoke, then. So, this was a mistake. Oh, that always should be. <laughs> I'm only at negative two for this. Only? Yep! <laughs> there it is! <laughs> okay. So, to provoke... On a miss, I think it just fails, it's right? Just, yeah, it's yeah what, you get a hard move, You get a hard move, basically. <laughs> Something's hitting the horns. Pretty much any time oh, yeah. a red number shows up, you've got a hard move, almost. Not okay. always, but... <laughs> but not always. Um, but uh, sometimes they have special things. Anyway, so you try to do this thing where you're going to trick the bull into charging at you and nimbly dodge out of the way. The thing is, you're fast enough. He's stupid enough. You can absolutely nimbly dodge out of the way. But he catches on to what you're doing fairly fast and as he's like charging past you he grips one of the steel supports the building in that giant hole that he made and he rips it out with a massive force and he just winds back up like a baseball pitcher and he chucks that directly at you but his aim is off it starts hurtling towards the big cadre of police that are huddled around the front door I would like to defend the police. Okay. How are you going to do that? <laughs> well, he's still insubstantial. He hasn't, quite exactly. out to, he hasn't quite figured out how to make himself not insubstantial. Mm -hmm. However, he thinks he can still make the steel beam insubstantial. Very smart. So he's going to rock it up and just basically try and Superman the beam. Alrighty. Would that be a role to defend or unleash your powers, you think? That is up to you. You're trying to defend the police, but you're doing it in a way that involves like making the beam substantial. Let's um, let's go for rolling your powers. So unleash. I like that one better. Yes, yeah. I figured, because you're in freak mode anyway. Alrighty. Boom. So there, you do it. You run up there, float up there rather. And yeah, yeah, I'm just picturing like it's still Sobe, like he's still in color, just hazy and see-through. <laughs> yeah, kind of like the Mario Pixel Cap or whatever. Yep, exactly. So, do you actually stop this beam from moving when you do this, or does it just keep on? No, I, I mean I'm not. I mean I could potentially stop the beam, mm -hmm. but not in the short amount of time that we have. So it's literally just goes over, grabs it, basically attaches on, and the beam just flies through about like five cops, including his dad. Just it's exactly. Funny. Yes. And he flies through with them. He's like, "Hi, bye." <laughs> And you can see your dad kind of like staring at you. He doesn't know it's you, but he yeah. still stares at you and goes by. And you can see that he is angry and livid. But also alive, which is good. Also alive, which is very good. So, Taros is clearly frustrated with the fact that his awesome beam plan isn't doing much, but it is starting to make the building feel a little bit less stable. You notice actually that there's a, yes, a bit of rubble starting to come from the ceiling and start to sprinkle down in heavier and heavier chunks. And right now, Taurus doesn't seem to realize that the building is starting to kind of crumble. He's kind of too concerned about the fact that he missed. But, Switchfoot, what do you do in this situation? I am so tempted to use Dark Visions right now. Oh, really? Yep. I won't stop you. All right, yeah. So I'm going to mark a Doom track, and uh, Jacob's going to go into Dark Vision mode. Okay. What do you see? What do you ask? Uh, so mark a Doom track to have a vision about the situation at hand. After the vision, ask the GM a question. Uh, they will answer it honestly. Okay. So you get a vision about the situation at hand, meaning this situation? Yes. Okay. So, you go into your dark visions mode, which is a very, like, mem a very a memory-heavy, dream-heavy thing. Mm -hmm. 
And you see what looks to be a, a bright red apple in front of you as you stare at that. And as you're staring at it, you see a scene kind of unfold inside of it that starts to be kind of starting to happen. And you can see a giant sea of rubble and crashing down and screaming and panicking and such. And you see yourself looking at yourself. And as the rubble comes down, the you that you're looking at gets crushed and breaks to a million pieces, never to be seen again. You said apple? Indeed. That's not the question I was asking. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Excuse it. Yeah. Uh, so how many questions do I get? Oh, that was it. <laughs> do no, it. Um, no. Um, okay. Um, question I'm going to ask is... What's the final cause of the building collapsing? Oh, it's it's clearly Tauros rampaging through it and tearing it. Yeah, down. but like what like what specifically? Like Oh okay. like what does he do that does it? Yeah. Okay. Uh the thing you notice that is the final cause of the building collapsing is a giant uh like stone pillar. Uh that you recognize immediately from being sort of like in the back corner of the building. That's probably holding up most of the ceiling proper at this point. Mm -hmm. And you can see when you focus on your vision, like before every thing thing starts crashing down, um, that Tauros is going towards that pillar and he's trying to like yank it out like a baseball bat. Gotcha. So Swiftfoot's gonna snap out of that that real quick. And um he looks up towards Sylve and yells out, We need to protect that pillar! So, at this point, has been flown through the wall, so there's really no one. Oh, I'm there. sorry. I thought you were, I thought you were yeah. still here. My bad. Never mind. Nope. <laughs> he took the expressway out. Right. Yeah. Did. Okay. So it now. Was a monorail. Right. So he's going to. Thank you. I'll try to think of it. So he's going to go ahead and look at the. Um, at Torah. What's he doing now? Right. Like right now? After he's sat there and done this vision thing. <laughs> um, what Taurus is doing right now is he's clearly trying to look for a way that maybe he can improve his situation. And he's trying to, well, frankly, he's looking towards that section of the building that you saw in the vision, um, where he wants to go towards that section and start wrecking stuff along the way, because there's still some setups and displays over there. Okay. So, um, the other... One of the other flares that I have. Mm -hmm. Constructs. Nice. Well, it makes sense, because he already makes, like, smaller constructs, so that's just right, an extension weapon, of his right? power. Right. Well, I spend one burn to create an, any object with your powers up to the size of a person. Mm -hmm. Within reason. I mean, if you explain it, it's fine. So, um, what he's going to do is, where that pillar is at, mm -hmm. he's going to create a construct right there. Which, again, is not something he knows he can do, but he's, like, just thinking about what what would work really well right there. Mm -hmm. So what he does is he creates... Um... He creates just, like, a... a just a little... It's not, like, a wall or whatnot, but it's just, like, a, a sheet of... It would you know, look like metal, but it's not. But it also has, it's right up against the pillar. It also has just, like, this wall of, sp like, spikes sticking out of it. In other words, he's made a spike strip that is, like, on the pillar. Just to make it so that he doesn't want to run into it. <laughs> to make it more unattractive? Yes. Okay. So, you do this. You build up these spikes... Um, do they look kind of like Danny differently? Like they look like like kind of like purple or like oh yeah, hazy yeah. They, they, there's there's some purple fire haze going off of it. Yes. Okay. So what's happening then, as we're seeing it, is Taros is running towards this direction, wrecking displays as he goes, like kind of like going, ah, ha, da, da, da. and as he's crashing through displays and getting toward that pillar, 
he kind of like stops as he sees those spikes. And he kind of like looks around. And he says, eh. oh, fine. And he goes and starts wrecking something else off the side. He starts tearing up the stage there. Good. So right now he's creating a scene on top of the stage. Perfect. Which happens to also be like where he's wrecking the sound equipment and all that fun stuff. So it's creating a lot of really awful noise. But he's not going for that pillar. Yay. Yay. Sove, where are you right now? Well, funny you ask, because Sove is actually very happy that he is on the stage. Because after flying through and, um, you know, putting the pillar down gently, Sove has made his way back to basically the overset, overhang where all of the buttons and electronics are. Ooh. And he's had enough time to calm himself down a little bit where he's at least somewhat tangible. Okay, I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. Basically, at least a hand. So, the bull is on the stage, and then Sobe flicks a button, and every spotlight, boom, 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 on the bull. Taros immediately smiles. He sees these spotlights coming on, and he does one of those gladiator things where he's like, yeah! Then Sobe grabs a microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and most importantly to our friends in blue down in the middle of the pit, may I present to you the star of this evening's show. I hate you for that comment in chat because that's totally where I was going with that. Aww. <laughs> how's the bull reacting so far? Oh, the bull's like, yeah, yeah, Taurus, 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 come on, Taurus. No, none of the cops are going along with him, by the way. Mm -hmm. They're all aiming their guns at him. So as you can see, we've got exactly what we need. The stars have aligned. The spotlight is where it needs to be. And everybody will know the name. Taurus. But! No, 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 no but! What is better for making an impression? Who's more famous? The one who burns out quickly in their 15 minutes? Or the one who gets to walk by all the cameras and the flashing lights as they're brought in to one of the most well-lit, well-occupied buildings in the entire city? Oh, the second one! The second one! <laughs> So, if that, if that is what you desire, then, gentlemen, would you escort our friend to the most populated, lit up, decorated building in the city and make sure all of the bracelets are shiny. So the police clatch on very quickly to what you're talking about. And they like, several of them like wield their cuffs and, and they're like, yeah. And Toros has taken a second to realize what you're doing or saying. I'm attempting to provoke him. What are you provoking him to do? To go along with him? Yeah, to, to let the cops take him to the most well-lit and heavily populated building in the city. Just because it's the police station doesn't mean anything. <laughs> the, the county jail doesn't mean anything at all. Exactly. I'm just playing to his ego. You are, and you've caught on to it very, very fast. Go ahead and... Mm, roll to provoke. Though, we'll see what happens with this. 
Okay. Oh, um. I'm. What you got? Jacob's gonna help. Or. Okay. Let's say if you didn't, I was gonna spend team self. No, yeah, no, 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 no need for that. So. After Sove says all this, and Taros is clearly having thoughts about it, Swiftfoot yells out, Really? No, it's the best place in the, in town for lots of people to gather. They'll love you there. So he's spending team to help with the illusion of jail is a great place to go. Alrighty, you have spent that team. Leaves us with one team for now. Oh, okay. So this is fun because <laughs> you can either choose to do it or the seven to nine. Get one of the following three options. Exactly. So he's going to choose one of those options. He's going to err. He will step down from the stage as the police are kind of approaching, and they catch on enough to like start like saying, "Yeah, yeah, we got you, buddy." And Taros is coming down, and he's like, "Okay, yeah." Yeah, I got that. I'm going to go. I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be with all these cops. And as he steps down, he starts realizing that that's your opportunity where he's down, his defenses are down, and he's just realized what's going on. And you just, you just hear over the intercom, swift foot, now. Okay, so... Um... Okay, so, using his fast speed, Swiftfoot's gonna run, like, grab the cuffs off of one of the officers, and just, like, slap them on the guy. On the bull. And get, like, you know, handcuff from, as, like, by running really fast. From behind. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's so, unleashed. that's gonna be doing playing Gage, I'd say. Oh, okay, I was gonna say release, but that's cool, too. I can do that, too. Either one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's indirectly engaged for sure, because you're trying to basically engage with the yeah, bull. No, that makes sense, too. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, there's one team left in the pool. And I am going to spend it to help out. Because now that the bull's catching on, Sophie can't do anything physically to help. But he does have control of the spotlights. He's going to shine it right in the bull's eyes. Alrighty. So, <laughs> next to Sophie shining the spotlight in there, Swift Foot... You are able to get your opportunity to slap those cuffs on him. What is your choice for your directly engaged? Oh, I'm resisting blows. Okay. So, you go around, you get those cuffs on him, and he realizes immediately what goes on. And he is flailing about, trying to figure out, like, well, this is, I can't, it's, and he starts, like, bawling, and he's like, no, I don't want to go to jail. And... As he's, like, trying to shake you off... Because you just put the cuffs on him, though, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. So as he's trying to shake these cuffs off, he starts stampeding around, kind of in a random circle, trying to, like, get them off one way or another, bash into this, bash into that, and he eventually, like, tears right through the cuffs, narrowly missing them, as he plows right through the last remnants of that wall that Sove had helped him kind of go towards. I have with a the really steel idea. Well, as he's plowing through it, he doesn't appear to be stopping anytime soon. Well, Sobe is going to basically look around, look at the wall behind him, tear something off. We don't see it in the comic panel. We just hear that. We get the onomatopoeia of something being ripped off the wall. He's okay. going to fly down, land in front of the bull, and he's got a red cape in his hands. And he just starts. Ole, 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 ole. Holy! He's, he's basically being a matador. Alrighty. Well, that's, that's a provoke I ever heard it, because that's what matadors do. <laughs> yep. So, go ahead. <laughs> oh, we are out of team, by the way. I need to yes, move Mr. Saturn. Can I do we this? are, but that's a partial success. It is a partial success. So... What happens is you broke him with this giant cape to go tearing through as you kind of like wave it out and show him the road to freedom basically as he goes through that hole. Um, 
But he says, hey, thanks, pal. I owe you. And you have influence now over Tauros as he runs out of that hole and flees so, the scene. So he's overreacting. He's overreacting. So he flees the scene, absolutely, going through that hole, leaving a bull-sized shape as he dashes off into the evening. So, Toros has run through the building, left out that hole. And you've gotten him out of the building. While and handcuffed. people aren't in danger anymore. Yes, while handcuffed. He is still handcuffed. People aren't in danger anymore, except for two specific people. Because, Us. as you, yes, go possibly to give chase, some shots ring out, like, towards the wall to kind of, like, warn you guys. And you see the police say, yeah, stop right there! Hands up! So, Henry will stop, hands up, while still floating across, uh, on top of the, while still floating a little bit on, uh, above the ground. Okay, and Jacob, how do you react to seeing these cops out here, trying to uh, tell you guys basically to stand down? So, um, Jacob or Swiftfoot's going to spend his last remaining burn and uh, put use moat once again to create another flaming barrier between him and the police officers. And, uh, you know, then he's going to put his hands up afterwards, but he's stopping them from getting to him. Right, of course. As he looks so, over at Sove, like, you know, okay, where do we want to run? So the police go up against this barrier... And they know something's up when they kind of see the flames or a purple like, barrier arrives. And they go, ah! It's like, he goes, out, I wouldn't touch that. Like, seriously, I actually have no idea what'll happen, so just probably don't. I do when it hurts. Okay, yeah, don't. Don't touch it, please. So, one of the policemen starts shouting over the, the den of everything, saying, you gosh darn, like, vigilante supers, like, kids, like, you're not even registered. You're a menace to the city. Look at all of this. And... Sylvie, it's your dad. Yeah, so it's a mess, but no one got seriously hurt. And the only reason we were even here is because someone decided to lead, you know, Mr. Seeing Red and Excitable in through a wall, and then somebody else decided to get them all excited. And yeah, so it wasn't like we were trying to step on anyone's feet. It was simple. We were trying to save people. Hmm. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but there was a giant steel beam that would have impaled five of you had I not made it go incorporeal and go through you. At least kind of like all trying to... Yeah, yeah, he's kind of right now. Not to mention that if uh, Mr. Bull had smashed into that pillar there, this entire building would have crashed. So please kind of give you a sideways glance. And a few of the policemen start, like, holstering their guns. And you can feel the tension in the room starts to die down just a little bit. But Detective LaMontagne is still not entirely placated. As he kind of speaks up and says, All right. Whatever. You did a couple of good deeds. Doesn't mean what you did is right. Your kids, you got curfews. We'll let you out of here with a warning so long as you scram right now. So, Sove looks over at Swiftfoot, nods, and I'm assuming the panel we get is as Swiftfoot runs off in one direction, Sove just sinks through the ground. He <laughs> sees like the three panel transition of you just, this yep. guy going, Whoop. <laughs> Yeah, so Swiftfoot's going to run off to a um, some place that's completely isolated and change out of his suit. Yeah, uh, Henry's going to do the same and immediately put a call into Joey. Yeah, and actually, Jacob's also going to run over to the crowd and try to see if Penelope's still there. Well, interestingly enough, Penelope and Joey are in the same place. Uh, they're out with the EMS in front of the building. As the situation is starting to kind of like calm down and they're more taking care of people who like were endangered 
as opposed to like trying to stop the rampaging bull because he's gone now. Yeah, so Henry at this point's gonna look. See, told you, not gonna get hurt. Just had to make sure everything was safe. Julie, upon seeing you, um, immediately runs up to you and gives you a big old hug. Hi, hi, hi. He like kisses your face like several times over. Like I'm so happy you're safe. Oh, I, t- I told you nothing was gonna happen. Uh, Although whoever those two were, my dad was mad. He was so mad at them. Ah, uh, jeez, your dad didn't get hurt, right? No, no. I mean, one of them it was actually kind of cool. Just. The bull was through a giant steam. I mean, I never went out. I was going to try and help, but I just sort of stood there and watched because it was just mesmerizing. One of them, the bull through a giant steel beam. Uh, and it was going to go through all the cops, and then, and then the guy in the purple just like went up and grabbed it, and the, the beam like turned into this thing, and it, like, it went through all of them, but didn't hurt any of them. It was, like it was a ghost or something. Oh, that's so cool. That's That sounds kind of like that Sove guy. Is that what it is? I mean, I was, I'm sitting there like, I've never been so scared and then so excited in the same instance before. Oh, it's so cool. And Wright and Swiftfoot was there too, right? That's, 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 that's the, uh, the, the, the fast thing guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a cute rabbit guy. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, I, I think so. It was kind of all a blur. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, when when those guys get together, oh, that's so cool. Oh, and you gotta see them, I'm so jealous. Meanwhile, as Joey is, like, geeking out over the superheroes who are around that he didn't get to see all this, all of, uh, Jacob. Yeah. Yep, you see Penelope there, she's still kind of, like, wrapped up in that blanket, everything seems to be mostly okay, so she's just kind of, like, shaking things off and shaking her head. So. And... She's not sitting out there kind of alone right now. So you get this comic panel, these se- sequence of panels that have Jacob, like, see her there, checking to, you know, just, you, she clearly was just checking to make sure she was just, she was okay. And he kind of, like, turns away, and then he looks back and sees that she's alone, and then turns back, turns away again, just kind of takes his breath, and, um, you hear, you get the thought bubble of, I don't want to endanger her. Oh, no. She instead turns around and goes back over towards her. And it's, let's, say, let's say, if he wasn't, how, how obvious was he being that he was, you know. Oh, extremely. Because <laughs> if not, Henry was going to provide a little poking. If, if oh, yeah, no, no, he, he's, yeah, no, he, he goes over towards her. Okay. Jacob, as you turn around to finally go and talk to Melody after you're waffling, you see uh, another handsome rabbit walking towards her with his big burly arms. And you recognize this as the uh, fellow that she was dating that she took to the uh, dance with her. Mm. I fear if we gave him a name, but I called him Flash in my notes. Okay, there you go. So, yes. So you see Flash walking towards Penelope with his big arms, and he's like, Ah, uh, my baby's safe. And he goes to give her a big hug, and she goes into his arm, and she's weeping profusely. And you witness her immediately pull away and smack him in the arm as hard as she can. And she screams out like, you abandoned me in there! And he fires, I got, did you see what was going on in there? People were getting killed, I gotta get out of there. Like, I didn't want to get smashed like a pancake, but why didn't you get out of there? She, skew coward, and like, so, they have a very so, big fight. So Jacob just immediately interjects with, you don't just leave the someone you care about without good reason. And saving yourself is not good reason. Ooh. We get a small little interject panel that's just, uh, Joey and Henry both staring and then both looking back at each other, staring, looking back at each other again and go, we're never going to do that, right? No, no, never. Okay. <laughs> okay, Jacob, so you walk up there and you talk him up. So, you're basically defending a Penelope, I'd say, right? I mean, I don't know if I'm defending her, per se. I'm just talking to this guy. <laughs> you're talking to this guy. Mm. Um... What I want you to do 
Okay. Yes, I want you to roll to directly engage, because this guy is a threat to you romantically. Okay. It's not exactly trying to get back with her, but all right. Oh, no, no, don't worry. Okay. Okay. So, you get to choose two against this big dumb jock. So, I'm going to resist blows, because that's a good one to do. And I'm going to take something from him. And what is that? His dignity. Nice. So, you basically talk him down. As the argument comes out, and he's he is drawn to silence as he kind of sees the words you're spitting out at him, and he's like, the, the, "Yeah, whatever." And he walks away, leaving Penelope kind of standing there alone. And she kind of sighs as she sees him just kind of walk out and leave her. And she stare and she kind of looks over at you, and she uh, actually looks kind of hurt and says. You didn't need to do that. I could have handled him. I know. I just felt like a good thing to say. He's not looking at her at this point. Is She's it... not looking at you. Yeah. So we get these two wonderful panels of you guys talking to each other briefly as neither of you are staring at each other. Right, yeah, exactly. And he just kind of says, You doing okay, Penelope? Yeah, I'm fine. You doing okay? He doesn't give an answer to that right away. In fact, he doesn't really answer that at all. As he turns, as he turns it's like, just, I hope you're happy. And I'm sorry. She turns away and says, I am too. Remember, Jacob's the one that ditched her, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we get another interject panel at this point. Do we go over and like, interject? Because this is really awkward looking. And Joe's like, no, no, I, th I think I think it's just done. As Penelope kind of turns away from Jacob and she starts kind of like walking away too. So Jacob does turn around and like look and it looks like he wants to say something and he just can't. He even gets out the Penelope... So, Henry, you see this. Also, uh, Jacob, I need your marking condition for me because of that major heart blow that just hit you. Taking a powerful blow could also be emotional. It that's can, play. that's true. Did you want me to do that instead? Because I totally uh, would. I know. I'm going to say take a condition for now because it wasn't that big. It was just like a meh. I'm guilty. Sad. So, Henry, you see this happen too. Your friend. And Joey even looks kind of like, oh, what, what, what do we do? I have no idea. Maybe milkshakes? Milkshakes are good. But we should probably stick around because my dad definitely knows we're here. And he's definitely going to be coming over to check on us. Yeah, we can do milkshakes after. So he... Pardon the pun, pads on over to Jacob. Yes. Just puts his arm around him. You okay, buddy? Jacob kind of sighs and shakes his head. Like, no. No, I'm not. I can go after her? I can't. Why? Because I... I told you, I'm not going to be around much longer, and she deserves to be with somebody who can take care of her. What do you mean you're not going to be around much longer? What are you talking about, Jacob? I told you about my infection. Player, did you tell Henry or did you yeah. tell Sobe? Um, Henry, both. On separate occasions? Yes. Okay, that's why I wasn't sure. That's why I was playing off. Like, yeah. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. no. He, he, is, yeah. he is confided in Henry a lot. Okay, okay. <laughs> doesn't mean you can't be happy. I'm... No, I get that, but I don't want to cause her any more pain by 
becoming so emotionally attached to me that it gets worse when I'm not here anymore. I don't know much about the whole science behind it, but you can we'll find a way to, to stop it. I keep telling myself that. But so far Dr. Collins has just not not been able to figure out much of anything and I trust him, like, I love the guy, but I just gotta accept the fact that it's entirely possible that it won't. Joey actually kind of rejects on you, and I, he kind of puts a hand on you as well, Jacob, and he says, uh, he looks, looks at you kind of seriously, and he says, it's, even if maybe there's no real cure yet, that doesn't mean you have to throw your entire life in the trash. And he looks, he's cute and smart. I am. Jacob gives get just a big sign. Puts his arms around both the two guys. It's just like, you guys are great. Thanks. But I just, right now I just feel like it would be best if she, she could find somebody who will actually protect her. For much longer than I could. That buff, horrible excuse for a rabbit didn't couldn't do it. Look, <clears throat> you are putting too much pressure on yourself. Yes, there's something hanging over your head. There's something hanging over everybody's head. But you can't just sit there and let whatever this is eat at you to the point where you're not going to do anything. Because if there's one thing that, that, that I know, and, and, and trust me, I'm not the best when it comes to you know, showing emotions or, 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 or talking, or you, you, you know. But if there's one thing I do know, it's that even if it's for a little while, Everyone needs to be happy. And just because you're not going to you go think you're going to be here to protect someone doesn't mean you can't. So you need to stop being afraid of what's to come and start realizing what's in front of you. And I'm doing two things in this month. Okay. I am triggering both a comfort and support mm -hmm. in conjunction with my mask ability. Ooh. I am showing the more mundane side of my double life, so I'm shifting my freaking mundane and switching those labels, and I'm comforting and supporting. Interesting. That's such a weird ability to have. I know, I love it. I like it too. Yes, I'm affirming my secret identity. Yep. Or isn't that you're affirming your civil identity, or your civilian the secret identity? identity is like yeah, the secret identity. identity. My heroic or secret identity. I'm, right. I'm affirming the secret one. Yep. Gotcha. Alrighty. Rolled a nine on the covering and support. So, Jacob's going to, um, he's going to, uh, kind of stop, and he looks down, and he looks over to you, he's like, Henry, I just, when I found out, I wanted to be with her so much, but when I found this out, I just, I couldn't imagine putting her through the pain of losing someone she cared about, so I instead decided that I might as well push her away now before she became too attached. Although, maybe that was a mistake. I don't know. I'm just. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't want to. He actually kind of starts sobbing slightly as he uh, 
kind of puts his hand to his head. He's just like, I don't want to die. Joey immediately hugs you. Oh. Henry, the same way, he goes, oh. you're not going to. We're going to. We're going to figure this out. I promise. I'm not sure how, but we're going to do it. Now, I don't know about you, but I could really use a milkshake. Yeah! That sounds good. I'm also no longer also, insecure. Thank you. I was going to say, mechanical question, what'd you do? <laughs> good to know. So as you guys agree on getting a milkshake, you can hear some footsteps coming from behind you as, Henry, your dad's walking up, and he sees you, and you can see he immediately relaxes. Like, he, like, loses like he's been holding a breath for 10,000 years. He's like, oh, thank God. Uh, hey, Dad. Uh, Jacob gives a wave. You know, as he, as he's, kids are okay. As he's, like, you know, wiping tears out of his eyes, he gives, gives a bit of a wave, like, hey, we're, we're good. Kids are okay. I'm just so glad. Jeez. Uh, none of you guys are hurt, right? I mean, nothing about the normal, typical scrapes and bruises and you get from the start of the wrecking ball. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you guys uh, had your wrecking ball after all, even though uh, your party got kind of ruined in the end. Yeah, that was kind of bull. Just a bit. Just a bit. So, um, are, 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 are you okay, Dad? Oh, I'm fine. There were some heroes, he's used quotation marks, in there who were trying to take out the bull before the proper reinforcements could get here. And they did an okay job, but I mean, you know how they are. Showing yeah. off, doing all that, that stuff. So, who, which ones were it, was it? Uh, that... Whatever, kid. Um, Suleiman, Suv, uh, Suave, and Joey Mila. Oh, Sove. It's like, yeah, that one. Whatever. Uh, what's what's? I mean, if if they were helping, what's what's so bad about it? Son, you know how I feel about vigilantes. They're operating like they're above the law. I mean. We could hear out here the fact that it sounded like one of them was trying to convince the bull to go with you guys. How is that above the law? Yeah, it was kind of interesting. Because that's the job for the police negotiators. Not for any sort of civilians, because that's what these are, who are coming out there and trying to do things, and they could have gotten themselves or other people hurt. It's not that we're not thankful. It's just... You gotta follow the law, and you know that. So, what you're saying then is that you want them to be... Is you, you're saying that the, the, the Sove and whoever else was out there is, isn't really smart, but they need to be... They're, they're more dangerous. Uh, I guess that's about right, yeah. That's me attempting to trigger, I am what you see. Oh. How does that work? When you spend time talking to somebody about your identity, you can ask them which label they want to impose on you. Basically, it's a label shift move. Right. Their player, in this case the GM, will tell you honestly. If you accept what they tell you, take plus one forward and either mark potential or clear a condition. Well, they clearly agreed with you. <laughs> Right, so he wants to basically say that Sobe is a danger, so danger up, superior down, was that Exactly, shit? yes. And, uh... And Henry's in a weird spot, because he wants so desperately to, to argue with his father, but knows this isn't the right time to do so. She's just like, yeah, I mean, I guess if, if they are doing things recklessly, then that would be a would be a danger to people, wouldn't it? And he's reluctantly going to accept that. So I get plus one four and I'm not going to And as you do that, your father puts his hand on your shoulder saying, See, Henry, I knew you and I were on the same page. You're a good kid. And you too, Jacob. Sorry that your night got ruined and... 
Oh, it's okay. Uh, Thank you, sir. I mean, Appreciate it. I mean, we're, we're going to go get milkshakes that Can I borrow 20? You know what? I'm so happy that you guys aren't squished that I will give you a 20. Go ahead. Enjoy yourselves and get out of here. We got it pretty much cleared out here anyway. There's not even much in there to worry about. Just like a bunch of trash and a bunch of rubble and whatever. So you kids have a good night. Um, if any of the stuff I brought is salvageable, but it's done in evidence, can I have it back? All right, I guess so. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Don't say I never did anything for you. I never do. You kids have fun. Thanks, sir. Anyways, you'll have to have a good night. Yeah, they, they, they start walking as soon as they're out of earshot. Totally didn't think he was going to give me 20 bucks. <laughs> and you say you're not a charmer. Joey kind of nudges you. He usually doesn't work with him. I mean, he, I, mean I love him, but he can be a bit of a hard ass. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah. But we got 20 bucks for milkshakes. Woo! This totally did. Yay. So you guys go off for your milkshakes. Do you go anywhere special? Like, go to the usual place? Like, what we got here for milkshakes? I named the last restaurant. OPT, it's on you. <laughs> so, it's, uh... The place is called, uh... Because, why not? It's called Rocky Road. And, um... It is... A, uh... It's basically, like... A bar, except it's ice cream and milkshakes. <laughs> it's like a... It's like a, what you call, a malt shop. Sure, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Called it's Pops, an old school soda pop. Yeah, there you go, yeah, I exactly. Thanks so much. Yeah, you know, they've got... They've got food, you know, it's whatever, but, you know, it's milkshakes, ice cream, and, you know, you know like... Basic burgers and things like that. It's like an A and W. Oh. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Oh. Okay, that exists now and forever. So you guys go into Rocky Road, and it's like crowded with some of the kids who clearly couldn't go to the Wrecking Ball tonight. So you're in good company. You sit down and you get your milkshakes. What do you guys get? Oh, well, Jacob's clearly getting chocolate, because, I mean, look at his fur color. Nice. Better than I expected. Extra thick chocolate chip cookie now. Ooh. With two straws or one? One. Good. Joey doesn't like germs either. <laughs> Joey gets his strawberry, and he's happy. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's one. <laughs> he knows better. <laughs> Uh, so you guys enjoy yourselves drinking your wonderful, like, malt shakes, and and the entire time, like, Joey's kind of going over the stuff that happened in there, and talking about, like, oh, that was so cool, like, what Swiftfoot Swift did, like, the whole, like, running thing, and he, like, he hit the, he hit the bull guy so hard, and then, like, that, I didn't see so but but he did some cool stuff with, like, that metal girder, and cool, and all that stuff, ah! Uh. Yeah, those two really, uh, Really did all did a lot of good in there, didn't they? He looks oh, over. Oh, Henry! Oh, go on. I was gonna say he looks over at Henry. It's a bit of a smile, but not that he knows who Henry is, but Henry knows who he is. So. At that though, Joey actually um, looks at Henry. Oh, Henry! I forgot you were going in there to talk to the bull. How did that go? Um, I I never got a chance to because I, I got out to the the front and just sort of in. Uh, and I, 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 I froze. Oh, it's always so like you. Like when things get kind of crazy and dangerous, Henry freezes up. He's trying to shift your labels because he cares about you. He is trying to shift my labels. But he's going to lower your danger and he's going to raise your mundane. I have to reject that on principle. Oh. <laughs> No, because it's either reject it and take a condition if I fail, or don't reject it and take a condition because my Monday's at three. Yeah. 
But interesting note, I do get to add a plus one to this roll because I have influence over Joey. Nice. You do. And Joey doesn't have influence over you, right, uh, Henry? Or uh, J- uh, Jacob? I don't think so. Oh, Henry's got influence over me, yes. Yeah, but Jacob, um, Joey does not. I don't think so. That's, no. Yeah. No, yeah, so. this was because of... Uh, um, Boyfriend. I, yeah, move thing. Yeah, anyway. Alrighty. So wow. So, on that miss, that means I get to just do it anyway, right? Oh, no, you get to mark the condition. Your words hit you hard. Mark a condition, and the GM will adjust your label. So you Alrighty. get to adjust his labels in any way, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm marking guilty, by the way. Very nice. Okay, so looking at your labels. He's going to lower your danger. And he's going to actually, since he can't raise your mundane, he is going to raise your superior because you paid attention. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I pressed the buttons for you. I should go ahead and fix that. Should be a zero, I think. No, it's fine. Danger at one, superior at zero. It's, it's fixed. It's good. Great. It's Sweet. where it's supposed to be. Very good. This is why I don't fiddle with sheets. Just, he tenor sort of gets all blushy. Just... Oh. Remind me why I get extra thick again. He was just because you're cute when you pucker up, and he kisses you on the cheek. Aww. Aww. So, um. <laughs> Jacob just looks at you and goes, You guys are so cute together, you know? We know. <laughs> Henry gets all embarrassed. So, uh, Jacob, hmm. as you guys are enjoying your wonderful uh, beverages inside the ice cream shop, somebody has the TV going up there. Okay. Because they're like, yeah, I always have those little corner TVs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's a report going on about the wreckage that just happened tonight. Can you manage to catch some of that? And... You can see in their coverage, you can kind of barely make out what they're saying, but they go over a scene that looks to be in an alleyway that's right next to where the wrecking ball was. And there's a giant, like, sea of ice that's filling up this entire alleyway. It has two human-sized, like, chunks taken out of it. And you can hear the reporter say, like, experts aren't quite sure what caused this freak ice happenstance in this small part of the city, uh, but meteorologists say that they have given up. Oh. Yes. Right. So no further suspects, though, were found at the scene of the crime. Jacob kind of, like, thinks for a moment. He looks over at Henry and he's like, you know, actually, I do need to go back there before we go home. Why? That place is a wreck and it's swarming with police. I had a part of a kind of like lowers his voice over to and part of a vision I had earlier. He looked at you. And, and this is me, the player. I didn't hear a word you just said. All I heard was mumble mumble. Sorry. <clears throat> he says, I, I had a vision. It's, it has something to do with the vision I had earlier. I need to go back there. If, in the chaos, I kind of forgot about it. Um, I can't stop you, but I don't think it's safe. I mean, the police are all there. It'll be fine. And, I mean, yeah, my dad knows you, but what exactly are you going to say to the police to get back in that area after you left? I lost something. And they'll, ask you to des- and they'll ask you to describe what it was, fill out a report, and they'll get it back to you if they find it. That's a really important pocket watch. If, if I don't have watch. it, I'm going to be late. Okay, Alice. I'm going to be late. <laughs> oh, the white rabbit, I get it, but he's not. Come on, I'm not white. Look, if it's a pocket watch, I'll just text my dad. It's not really a pocket watch, though. I don't know what it is, but I have to look in one of the garbage cans. 
garbage can. What? That's what you. That's what the vision was, bro. <laughs> no, no, it's that's, that's Joey. Oh, sorry. Garbage can. I mean, the last time, from what I remember hearing, thanks to my dad, the last time, you know, garbage cans were involved in a location where, uh, you know, Sove and, and Swiftfoot appeared, there was vomit in it. Yeah. Um. Don't know about that, but. It's important. At least I feel like it is. Like I said, I, 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 can't, I can't stop you, but I don't... Well, I'd, I'd actually really appreciate if you could be there with me. You want us to come, too? Yeah. I don't feel like it'd be a good idea to be alone on this right now. Because I don't know what's going to be there. But it's, as I said, it's important to my condition. I think. So, so, let me just, let me just get... Normal person. Normal person. Mm -hmm. Normal rabbit with infection. Mm -hmm. Yes. If something goes wrong, what are we going to do? All the baseball bats are still in the rubble. And I can't throw a punch. Nothing's going to go wrong. There's a, The police are all there. It's not, it's not a big thing. They're just going to go there, check something, and then leave. I mean, what was in my vision can't possibly be inside there. What, are you going to pull Penelope out of a trash can? No, myself, actually. At this point, Henry just looks and just puts his hand back of his hand on your forehead. Mm -hmm. Are you sick? I mean, yes, I I am sick. I mean, like, do you have a fever? Because it sounds like a fever dream. It, I mean, I would totally agree with you if I didn't know that this stuff gives me visions already. I actually used it in. Well, never mind. Well, if it's important to you, uh, Joey, um, I think it's good to help him. Don't you, Henry? I mean, yes, but going back to the scene of devastation, where we've already been yelled at to leave, to search through a trash can where you're going to pull yourself out of a trash can, I'm sorry if this sounds like an episode of The Twilight Zone. It I is hate that show! Yeah. <laughs> but I think the vision was telling me that there's something in there that's in close to me. He looks at Joey. I'm not convincing you to not go in my Nah. Then he looks for a second, looks back at Jacob. Looks back at Joey, and then a little smile crosses his face. I think I'm going to need more convincing. Do you need another milkshake? Be lucky, you cute. Thank you. Now, is that the GM not picking up on the hint, or Joey just being oblivious? It is both. Okay. <laughs> it's Joey being oblivious because the GM didn't pick right. up on the hint. Exactly. He wanted a kiss, I think. Bingo. Oh, right. Sorry. That's... Oh. <laughs> because, because I had an amazing idea, like, when he said that immediately. Because as, as he says that, Jacob kind of, like, gets a sly grin on his face and kind of looks over at Joey. Just kind of gives, like, the eye, an eye wiggle thing. <laughs> you don't need to tell me twice. And he goes and goes for a kiss on you. With his strawberry-colored lips. Because of the shake. Okay, fine, we'll go. Yay! 
Good, because I was going to say, if you were going to make me kiss you, it was going to be very embarrassing. For who? I'm not actually sure. I think Joey. No, I'd take a picture. Okay, then. Never mind. <laughs> Look, you should have heard him. All he could talk about was how soft your mother was when she hugged us. Yeah, I know. She's, she's quite soft. I hear, I hear I mean, a, a lot from humans. So I mean, uh, honestly, I, I, I just have to know. I have to know one very important question. Sure. What do you guys use for hair care? Well, it's fur care, and it's oh. um, there's it's a very it's called um. <laughs> and not a single one of them got the pun until I typed it into chat. Oh, I didn't even see. I'm sad yeah. I did. No, I, I, I got that, but yeah. <laughs> no, but Jacob would have just. Uh, anyway, no, it's, uh, I, I um, no, it's called uh, actually, yeah, it is hair yeah, care. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, anyway, Jacob stands up and like, well, the faster we do this, the better. Alrighty. That place is gonna be teaming with. The police for probably quite some time and then construction people and by then whatever could be there could be gone I hope the dance gets rescheduled to be fair we, the, the place got wrecked which I think is the goal yeah, yeah but not to that extent That's we true. didn't get a chance to dance I mean there's a jukebox over there but I'm pretty sure that Old Donnie doesn't want us dancing in here right now. Uh, probably not. Not after what happened last time. Oh, you mean... Yeah. The incident? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I forgot about that. Um, yeah. It's probably better if we don't. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Good. yeah. I mean, I, 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 I couldn't have fried food for a week after that. I couldn't even look at a noodle. I definitely look at carrots differently nowadays. <laughs> we just get a comic panel cut to It's the School Newspaper and the headline just reads The Udon Incident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to hold on to that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So you guys go back out to make your way back to the scene of the crime? Yep. Okay, so it is late in the evening. Because, I mean, it was the dance, it was late at night. All the action and commotion, all the drinking of shakes. Uh, so it's probably going to be pretty late. I'd say maybe closest to 10. It's fine. Not quite. Um, when you guys get there. And you notice the police presence has greatly died down. All the excitement is gone. Of course, none of the ambulances or any of the emergency vehicles are there anymore. That's all cleared out. Makes sense. Um, really, all that's there right now is there is like a small police patrol that has like some of the yellow caution tape at the front of the building. Mm -hmm. But it's actually pretty light detail. And it seems like most of them have cleared out. So, <clears throat> Jacob is trying to remember his vision. As in the player is trying to remember his vision, and uh, That's okay. and is trying to remember where in his vision that trash can was. Well, in your vision, the trash can was inside of the building. Right. Okay. So Joey, uh, Jacob's going to look for a way that he can try to sneak back in the building. All right. Uh, it doesn't take you too long to basically find a nice big bull-shaped hole. On the side of the building, you can easily walk through, and that oddly right now isn't being watched. Perfect. Jacob's going to look over at Henry and Joey, and just going to give a like a little shake of the head and go in that way. Uh, Joey, I'll, uh, I'll actually be lookout just in case. Okay. Um, if any of the cops give you a hard time, just. 
mention my name. I hope that will work. Okay. I mean, I hope most of them like my dad. I'm sure they do. He seems like a pretty nice guy when he's not angry. So you two go inside the building. Uh, the scene that we see as we go inside there is we see a nice big spread shot of what used to be the splendorous hall for the Wrecking Ball it is now more or less a pit of gravel and broken dreams. Uh, there is no people inside of there at all, no kind of setups remaining, barely the table standing. All that remains is the walls, the ceiling, thank you, Jacob, uh, and... You do see, even off in the corner of the building, some trash cans where people would like throw all their goods away, mm -hmm. etc. So, Jacob's gonna kind of, he's gonna actually give a sigh and walk over. He's like, I can't believe I'm actually looking in these things, but okay. As they walk by, Henry sees the bag of stuff that they had still left is still there, reaches in and grabs the flashlight. Ooh. Nice. Okay, so Henry, are you helping Jacob to look through the trash to find what he's looking for? Hell no, I'm holding the flashlight. He can look at the damn trash himself. Very I mean, smart. that's helpful enough. Yeah. So, Jacob, you go over to these trash cans. Uh, and you, there's like maybe three or four of them because it was like a big, you know, a big event. Oh, yeah, no, of, of course, cans. yeah. Um, and you look at them and immediately sticking out to your eye is um, there is one of the trash cans that does have a bright red apple that's sticking out, hmm. like sitting kind of on top of the trash. Like it's actually it was still thrown yeah. away, but yeah. you can so, see it very clearly. So that's the one Jacob immediately focuses on. As he looks and says, This is the apple was in my vision too. Okay. I mean, I'm no dream therapist, but I'm pretty sure seeing an apple in your vision means you probably have a dentist appointment coming up soon. Well, I saw it again in the, when everything was going on in here. Um, I actually used my powers to see have a vision. That's why the ceiling didn't collapse. Not not that you guys were here, but you know. Whoa, whoa. Um, did you tell Henry about your powers, yeah. or did you just tell him about the infection? I, I told him about the infection and that it gives him, like, things. Like, like he mentioned visions before, but not necessarily yeah. um, this potently. <laughs> um, what do you mean, ceiling didn't collapse? I thought you were not inside here. No, I told you about the secret thing I do. I thought you just told me that you had visions and someone infected you with something. Yeah. I've been helping out, you know. So what you're just telling me is that I just lied to my dad's face. No, you didn't know. Now I do. Now you do, yes. Trying to get me in trouble? No. Okay. So no one has any idea. It's fine. He digs in the trash can. Okay. <laughs> it's like digging into this trash can. He's saying all this. So you're digging into this trash can, throwing right. aside the apple, throwing aside the trash. You're kind yeah. of going in there. You're not even quite sure what you're looking for. Not at all. No. Nope. Like, like, so there's I'm, all sorts of debris. You're going. Oh yeah. Pretty sure I can't fit in here. So at least uh, not a second one of me. You dig through. Nothing really seems to stick out to you immediately uh, until you get closer to the bottom, and you come across what looks to be. An origami crane.
It definitely looks a lot different from all the other trash in the sense that it looks very deliberate. And also, very well made. So, he's going to grab the crane. Is that what it was? Yep. Origami crane? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a crane made out, of, made out of paper. Gotcha. Uh, folded paper, to be specific. Yeah, so he, he grabs, reaches in, grabs it, and kind of looks at it like, that's weird. And you unfold the paper. Well, yeah, of course. Great. When you unfold it, you see what appears to be a very long string of numbers and symbols and letters. And you recognize, after the things you've been through, this is a compound for a formula. This is a, what is it called, a formula compound? Yeah, one of those, yeah. Yes. So Jacob immediately takes his cell phone out and takes a picture of it. <laughs> And you can see at the end of this formula, there's a little equal sign followed by the delta symbol. So yeah, he, as I said, he, he gets a good picture of this thing, and he mm -hmm. immediately texts it to Dr. Collins. And as he stand, and Henry would see that, um, he, like the... So he can't obviously go like white because it's fur or whatnot, but the membranes of his ear and whatnot all turn like lose all of their color as he's just staring at this paper. Alrighty, Henry, you just saw your friend go pale as you've seen him after looking at this strange piece of paper. What do you do? Does it smell that bad that you're going that pale? Are you that queasy? It's not that at all. It's what's on this paper. I'm hoping it's not leftovers. It looks like a... He shows it to him. It looks like a formula of some kind. Okay. And... Yeah, yeah. That's, that's definitely numbers I don't look, understand. Yeah, look at the end of it, though. It's all of this equals delta. A triangle? It's... Triangle is a Greek character for Delta. I don't speak Greek. Yeah, no one else I mean, does, I, but it's just... I, mean, old... I, I know I'm a little Haitian Creole, but I don't speak Greek. Yes. <laughs> Regardless, the thing I'm infected with is called Psi Delta. <sighs> Delta. Delta, Delta, Delta. Can I help you? Help you? Help you? You always know these obscure songs, I just don't. That's not even a song, it's just a thing. <laughs> so. oh. And I literally sighed and then said Delta. Yeah. Oh, uh. Yeah. So, you find this formula here, you texted it over to Dr. Collins, you have not gotten a response yet. Well, it's getting late, and I don't necessarily think so, but he's going to yeah. fold up the paper nicely, put it into his pocket, and put his phone back in his pocket, whatever, and be like, alright, let's get out of here. I think that's all I need to find. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go. This is really weird. You're telling me. I may have actually just found some major piece of this whole thing. Maybe, I don't know. I can't be certain, but... I mean... For, for, forgive me for being a little paranoid here, but... Who... Who, who, who... Would have some super, super secret formula turn it into an origami crane and then... Throw it away in a trash can in a highly public place. I'm oh, sorry if if that feels a little, a little weird to me. Someone with a kid who doesn't know and the bed it better and just took a piece of paper and made into an origami thing and came here as a participant in the wrecking ball. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. Um. You know the Wrecking Balls for high school students only? Yeah. 
Can you mean you didn't make origami paper? things as a high school student? I can barely make a paper airplane. Oh. It's kind of a hobby. So what you're saying is you made this crane yourself. No. Put it in the trash can and then took me on a wild goose chase. No. 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 Th th that's what you just said. No, I just said I kind of try my hand at origami every now and again. Not this thing. I'm not good enough for this thing yet. Well, what this was. Trying, though. You know how hard it is to do with fur in your hands, though? No, I, 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 I can't. I can't say I do. Let's just put gloves on that, then. It's probably about the same thing. Yeah, no. No, no. probably not, actually. That would, that would definitely ruin my skin complexion. Oh, yeah, no, we wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> he says as he totally has a pair of fingerless gloves sitting in his back pocket to match his costume. Right, yeah. Your words say one thing, but your actions... Right. They do not. So, you guys are as you guys are chatting as you're heading out of the building. And when you get out there, um you actually find Joey he's still standing guard. Um, but he's actually kind of looking at what looks to be like a piece of paper. Or rather an envelope. And he sees you guys coming out and he's like, Oh hi guys. Hey Joey, what's you got there, huh? Uh, he like shows up, he holds this uh, envelope up, and he says, "Oh, uh, everything's going fine. Did you find everything you're looking for? Cause I found something." Yeah. What? Where did you keep that? Oh, I. Well, it's the weirdest thing. Uh, I was kind of like being lookout and being good at it, and looking for the cops and such. Uh. And I was kind of focusing one way, I think, and then I looked down, and um, I saw this stuff like into the back, into like the side of my shoe. Like I didn't even realize that it was there. Uh, but was it there when we walked in? No, it wasn't. Uh, but yeah, there's an envelope here, and I don't think I'm supposed to open it. Um, I don't think you are either. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it, well. Just look, and he hands it to you. And on the back of the envelope, uh, it says, um, to the kids who are not afraid to do right. And Joey kind of looks at him, and he says, yeah, I just... I think this is meant for somebody. Like, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be mine or not, but. Well, I mean, I know a trick that my dad taught me about how to open an envelope and reseal it afterwards so no one knows you looked at it. You want to see what's inside? Ooh, I do, I do. Jacob, Jacob come on. Yeah, Jacob smiles and walks over. Before we do that, though, let's 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 leave this area. Yeah, so probably good idea. Right, right, yeah. right. This is this is probably bad. Yeah. So let's 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 walk somewhere else. Like we're walking home somewhere. I don't care. Find a light and look, 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 look there. So you guys walk away from the building and make your way back towards home. Do you walk all the way, or do you so, want to, like take the monorail? So on on the way home, Jacob's actually going to call home. Okay, Jacob, you call home, and you get a hold immediately of your mother, mm -hmm. who's gasping. Yeah, that's why it's called. It's like, oh, Jacob, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. my little baby, oh. Hi, Ma, yeah, sorry, uh, sorry I can call sooner, we just got out of the police, not, not custody, but, you know, just uh, the whole thing of the, wrecking ball was great until the bull showed up. I saw it on the news. Oh, you're not hurt, honey, right? Oh, nothing more than like a 
few scrapes and bruises that you were expecting to get from being part of the wrecking ball in the first place. Uh, and, and how are your little friends? Everyone's fine. Good, good. Oh, oh what, what happened? I don't know. This bull just came in, bursting through the, the, the wall, and then uh, these other two like, um, heroes showed up and like, stopped him from destroying the entire building, but we were all just kind of running and things got confusing, and you know, so we all just kind of finally got back together. Oh, so you ran immediately. Like, you, you didn't worry, you didn't, uh, you didn't stay there? You uh, got to safety? Yes, I got to safety. Good. Oh, that's my, that's my boy. Always looking out for himself, not taking any unnecessary steps. And she's shifting up, she's uh, trying to lower your danger, by the way, by influencing you. Okay. And trying to raise your mundane. I'm going to reject that. Okay. Here, I reject the words from your caring bunny mom. Yes. All right. Good. Okay, I see it. I was... That's a full hit. So, what you going to do with that? Um, hold on. Uh, 10 plus, you got to choose two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I'm thinking. Uh, well, first thing he's going to do is uh, he's going to, um, Alright, um, I'm going to a immediately act, uh, to prove them wrong. I'm going to say, and is he, and he's going to say, well, Ma, I, I, I did make sure that my friends were out first before I got out of there. Oh, I, I'm sure you did, honey. I didn't say he you were going He totally did. Yeah, totally. We're safe because of him. Right. And then, um... And then you just get the look between Joey and Henry, just the nod, like, yep, a protective yeah. mom, we know this one. <laughs> yeah. And then, um... Uh, I'm going to cancel her influence and take plus one forward against her. You're taking plus one forward against your mom? And canceling, it, and canceling her influence. My goodness! It's she not, the first time, not the first time he's done this. Yeah, I know. I mean, he the player, not he the character. Okay. Right. Because, like, Alex did it the first time I tried this. Right. That's true. Uh, <laughs> Alex had a fun mom. I hated doing that voice, but I committed to it. I loved you doing that I voice, even if it was awful. Right. <laughs> okay, so... You tell your mom this, and she goes, Oh, well, okay, honey, I didn't... I didn't mean to imply anything. I'm just, I'm just happy that you're safe. I care about you. I know. Now it's getting late. You're on your way home? Um. Actually, um. Kind of hanging Jacob? out. Jacob? Well, it's the weekend, Mom's hanging out with my Henry and Joe and his boyfriend Joey. Um. You know, the two you met earlier. I might, might actually end up staying over there, maybe. I actually don't know what the plan is. You might stay the night at a friend's house? I don't know. I, I mean, uh... it might be a while. Oh, you are making friends. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't let me stop you. Uh, do you. Do you need your jammies or anything? I can drive them to you. No. Well, Mr. Lumpkins, do you need him? I know it's scary when you're alone. I, I, I would literally be with other people. Right, right. I, you're right. Okay, you're, you're a big boy. Uh, have fun. Hi, Ma. Bye. As soon as you hang up, Henry just spins his head and looks and goes, Mr. Lumpkins? Long story. Actually, it isn't really. Um, <laughs> it's a little st stuffed little um, rabbit I've got. <gasps> oh, he's a buddy who sleeps with a buddy. I don't sleep with Mr. Lumpkins anymore. It's so cute. It was just a child thing. I mean, I'd get a stuffed banana. Yeah, it just had him sit on my, sits on a shelf. Just you know, I like to look up and remember childhood every so often. 
Wow, you're really mature. Mr. Lumpkins. Yeah. Yeah, you're not mature. He's cute. Henry leans over to Joey. I'm not letting him forget that. Oh, please don't. So, I mean, uh, Joey, you called your mom, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, sorry. I mean, I, mean, I get the benefit. I mean, both of my folks work for the PD, so I didn't have to worry about it. Yeah, your dad kind of knows where you are, more or less. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you know he immediately called my mom. Yeah. So, see so what's inside this and then seal it back up, right? I mean, apparently you're both now sleeping at my place, I guess. I mean, you don't, if you don't mind, that'd be kind of cool, I think. I haven't had a sleepover in a while. I mean, I'd have to find the sleeping bag because it's not normally something that gets broken out, but okay. Oh, it'd be so much fun! But yeah, what's in the envelope? I mean, do you want to open it here, or do you want to just wait till we get back to my house? Ooh. Hmm. What do you guys want to do? Well, is it possible your father's going to be there? After something like this, he'll have paperwork till like 2 in the morning. Okay, then fine. I just don't want him to find it, per se, because, you know. My mother will probably be there, because they're not having a press conference at 2 in the morning. True. Yeah, let's open it here. Yeah. So how do you go about doing this? Uh, how Henry's going to go about doing this is he is going to... Hold on. And he's going to have to remember how to do this. And then he's going to turn quickly around so he's like back to them real quick. Turn his hand in substantial and pull the note out. So you do this. You pull out this note. Cause it, I mean, it's a parlor trick. I think it's yeah, fine. Nothing exactly. It's exactly so, what he's doing. You're pulling this note out of there, and Joey doesn't get a C to it, even though he's trying. He's trying to, like, look around. Oh, oh how'd you do it? A magician never reveals the secrets. Come on. Aww. We'll just make it up to you. Give him a little kiss on the cheek. All right. I just ain't telling you, Jacob. So you pull out this letter, and something interesting, when you pull out the letter itself, out tumbles out a small flower hmm. that's folded between the paper. Well, that's interesting. It's different. Is it a love letter? Um... I hope not. Well, open it and see, and when you fold open the paper to look at it, um, there's actually a fairly cryptic, I'd say, message there that restates, but in differently terms, to the heroes who are there tonight. The world may say that you're too young to do good, but the real heroes know differently. I watched your exploits. You did well, but you could do better. I can make you better. If you're interested, go to this address at this time. If you're not, then don't let me catch you on a bad night. And where the signature would be, there is an imprint Small one. Oh, a flower. Which you would probably recognize as a nightshade. I think that we just opened up someone's recruitment pitch. Yes. Recruitment for what? Well, I'm not sure how much you know about heroes in the city, but Joey, question. Yeah? Which hero 
in the city has an emblem that's a nightshade. <gasps> Ooh, I know this one! Okay, it's nightshade. Logan, nightshade! Oh, nightshade was in my shoe! Oh! That's weird. Very weird. Anywho, what does that mean? Oh, jeez, who is he for? Who is this for? Well, continuing with the contents of the letter reads, I'm going to assume Swiftfoot and Sove. Oh, we gotta get this to them! And how exactly do you plan to do that? I what are you gonna do? Throw up a symbol in the sky that's, that's what? You know, a ghost and a carrot? I, 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 I would think it would be bunny ears, actually. So. Yeah, I guess that's kind of hard. I don't know why he gave, why he put it on me then. Maybe he missed. Or maybe he thinks you're so. Are you so bad? You're so bad, aren't you? Joe? No. No, oh. I'm not. I mean, he put it in your shoe. Just saying. Henry, if the shoe fit. If I were so bad, I wouldn't have had a, I wouldn't have gotten trapped inside of that building that I pulled myself out of. Oh my gosh, am I so vain? I don't know it. Oh, what's his address? He looks at the address real quick. Oh, no, no, no that's stupid. That doesn't make any sense. Jake, and make sure he gets a good look at the address. As he burns it to memory. Oh, Henry's going to put the flower back in, fold the paper up, turn his back in, parlor trick it back in, and then hold it up. See? Look. Like it was never opened. Hmm. Well, now we just got to find a way to get it to those guys. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll find a way. But right now, I think going home is the best option because we got a key. Yeah, after all that, I do. Okay. Well, if they come and save us again, we can get this to them. So you're just going to keep that on you at all times? Can... Just on, the, on the off chance that two random people in the city of however many people are here are going to randomly show up at the same time you are, and you are not going to be panicked enough so you can come through the, oh, hey, here, I have a recruitment letter for you. Okay, well. Do you know how crazy that sounds? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Not to well, mention, this seems like it's got a timeline to it of some kind. True. Yeah. I mean, unless, of course, you are Sove and you're just oh. lying to us. But I don't know if I am. What if it's like one of those Jekyll and Hyde things where, like, it just turns on and suddenly I'm him and uh, you tell me if that were the case, right? I mean, unless your alternate side of you is trying to hide who you are. Hmm. Joey just looks really deep in thought. I, Joey, I think there's an easy, easy way to tell if you're so bad. Oh, what's that? He holds his hand up. Throw a punch. Oh, I, I, I don't want to hit you. It's okay. Uh, and Joey kind of like looks at you, and he kind of like. Does one of those little taps against your hand, against your hand, but clearly not putting a lot of effort into it. Are you trying to prove you are or you aren't so bad? I just, it's hard for me to punch you. Okay, fine, I'll, I'll try. Wait, okay, wait, okay. Wait, just, Joey, it's my hand. It's not gonna hurt. I promise. I don't want to break it. You won't break my hand. Okay. So Tony takes a deep breath and he winds up. And he goes to punch your hand. And it's not a very good punch. Looks at Jacob. Yeah, no, he's definitely not so big. Yeah, probably not. Uh, if I were so big, I could hang out with Swiftfoot and that'd be cool. Hmm. Henry's, Henry uh, <clears throat> does the little <clears throat> cough as he covers his mouth as he's uh, smirking at that one. Right. Jacob kind of does a little bit too, but it's like. <laughs> All right, fine. We'll just do whatever with the letter then. I hope they get it. 
I mean, you seem really excited just to want to hang out with heroes. Why? Well, because they're really cool. They get to have the cool costumes. They get to save people. They get to make a big difference. Great. I'm never telling you when I run into Sove because when you're talking, you're, you're going to cheat on me. I would not. He, hesi Besides, don't he hesitated at that. I think I, I oh, think he might. Totally, totally did. I mean, to be fair, I mean, have you seen the pictures? I mean, it is, it is spandex. It's it is. bad. I mean, we always have that rule, right? Like, we each get one? I mean, if you're, if you're gonna go big, go big, go, right? Go big, yeah. You totally, you totally have Sove as as your phone screensaver, don't you? No. Joey. It's okay. It's Swift. Fun. Hmm. Human and rabbit, huh? Guess I can't help it. He's kind of cute. Bunnies are cute. Yeah, they are, and they're soft and fluffy, and and uh, uh I love you, Henry. Uh uh, it's gonna take more than that. He's your kiss in the cheek. And, uh, Henry, hey. put, put oh, your no. hand up. Nope. Uh, nope. Uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. So nope. You get a picture. You get a picture of a rabbit as your screen phone screensaver, and you've been staring at somebody else's butt and spandex. Mm -mm. Nope. So. J Jacob just kind of gives his little smirk and he walks over to Joey and gives him a hug. So, uh, at least somebody can give me a hug. He looks at you pathetically. <laughs> Eddie, right. just, let's go. Okay, it's not going to work. <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it's not going to work. You you clearly stated that you'd rather, you know, hang out with, 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 with Swiftfoot and, and you'd rather stare at somebody else's butt. So now, yeah, we're done. Oh, Henry, you, you know I'm just kidding. Uh, Jacob, t t tell him I'm kidding. It's... I don't know if you are. I mean, you you, uh. you, you, you you seem to really like my hugging you, even though I don't, you know. That's not, that's not fair. You guys. You guys what? Hmm. It looks over. So Jacob, I don't know, Henry. Do you think he's sincere enough? I mean, he did just admit to staring at another dude's butt. He did, though. But you know, he's young. Maybe he just doesn't understand. I mean, I mean, in his defense, it is a nice butt. I mean, I'll have to take your word for that one. But see, he put it out. Okay, it's a nice butt. I didn't admit to. I didn't admit to staring at. It. I said it was a nice butt. Wait, I didn't say I stared at it either. You didn't say you didn't. Um, and George kind of looks out at his shoelaces. <laughs> so he's got to look down. So Henry sort of like lays down and does the, like the scoot up. So he's looking right up at him. Aww. What? Why are you looking down? Because I'm embarrassed. Why? You're staring at some dude's butt in spandex? Yeah. It's a very important question I need to ask. What's that? Was it a nice butt? Not as nice as yours? I don't want you to give me the answer you think I want to hear. I want you to give me the answer. Oh, sorry. Was it a nice butt? Yes, it was nice. Okay. Okay. And for the record, I still like yours better, so there. He looks up and smiles. What if I told you it was my butt? <laughs> he just kind of laughs at you. Wait, you don't think my butt can look that good in spandex? I mean, it could, but I mean, that's Sove, and you are not Sove. 
But what if I told you I was? Well, I'd have to wonder when you punch wimpier than I do. And we can barely speak up in class. And, like, he can do the whole hero speech stuff. So you wouldn't believe me if I told you I was so bad. Not at all. <laughs> Jacob, would you believe me? Um, if you were to sit here and say, I am Sove, I probably would. I'd maybe want to see some evidence, but sure, I would believe you. He says that in a manner that's like he's not actually expecting you to say it. <laughs> he's, I mean, trying, he's trying to play along with you and Joey is what he thinks he's doing. So... Even if I said I'm Sova, you, you, you would need proof that, that I was... Which, which, which makes sense. Right. Right. I mean, you know, just a little bit. Maybe maybe seeing that, you know, you and Spandex could help. That would help. Of course you want to see me in Spandex. It's a bias. It's a good bias. Piano, yeah, no, if you did say you were Sova, you'd need to show some proof. Like, need to fly, or do ghost stuff or whatever it is that he does. At this point, they've reached the uh, the door of the, the, the apartment place they're living up. Right. Well, I mean, we're here. And Henry is under the assumption, just because his mother isn't doing a press conference, she knows he's at the station. Mm -hmm. She's at the station helping with the paperwork. Make the, uh, so he knows it's just his brother at home at this point, so he knows he can continue the conversation inside, because Michael already knows. Indeed. Right. So they, they walk in. <sighs> so, I mean, I guess the question would be, what kind of proof would you need? I mean, aside from the obvious spandex. Who are you asking with that question? I'm asking Henry. I mean, I'm asking Jacob and Joey. Jacob just kind of like shrugs like, I don't know, just that incorporeal thing, or even just that invisible voice thing that he does. He's really good at it, too. Looks right. Hey, Michael. Michael comes uh, actually running in. Not too long after you get in, say, Oh! Oh! Henry! Henry! Oh, man! I saw you on the TV and you were doing... Oh! Uh, you were getting away safely! He looks Hi. goes... He, he smiles and goes, Would that type of proof help? Jacob kind of like looks at Henry and then looks over at Michael, looks back at Henry, and like, Wait, Henry, what are you actually saying right now? Exactly what I've been trying to say for the past five minutes. Joy looks over at you. Wait, are you. Was I saved by. Michael, would you please fill in the blanks because they obviously can't play a game nicely. Can, can you just tell them? I mean, I got permission? I, I mean, in, unless you want to see them suffer because I, mean, I, I am kind of enjoying this. No, well, I do, but... So he kind of looks at you guys. Jacob's already realized that, and, uh, you said he's just, he's like in shock. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael kind of stands up proudly and he says, Yeah, my brother's awesome. My brother, Sove. And on that, that's going to be the last panel. But before that, uh, I do have the mask abilities yeah. when I reveal my identity to people who don't know. I get to mark potential. Twice. Ooh, sweet. Yeah, this that's is right. Joey and that gives me an influence, and that gives me uh, uh, an advance. <laughs> nice. <laughs> totally was setting that up for the advance. I figured as much. It's a good setup for a closing panel, too. Yeah. Alrighty, so... On that, that is where we're going to end our panel for the or our um, comment for the evening. Except on the very back, there is actually a couple more panels. We see a shadowy alley as we see ice-covered footprints from two thugs that are still shaking off remnants of their encounter with Perry. And they're running towards a shadowed figure 
who has very thick glasses that we can see sticking out of the silhouette. And they're handing her what appears to be sort of a mangled version of Perry's weather device, the prototype that he had, like, tried to stop them from getting before, in the previous issue. This person takes the device, and we can see in the panel her long manicured fingernails and a smile as she says, Now, we can finally start the test. And that is where the bookend will occur. So, thank you guys very much for joining us tonight. Again, this is BCC, Emerald City, with OPT Lawyer, TGE, and I'm your GM, Chameleon Ice. Thank you for coming, everybody.